Hello everybody, this is Lou and Dan on your left, and he's going to read some articles, or an article about the Trinity Origins, and that's going to be uh, also contained in the book Fossilized Customs. Hello Dan. How you doing, Lou? I'm, I'm fine. Oh, well, that's good, that's good. Yeah, this uh, this Trinity thing, it's a, it's a big thing. It's got a lot of people uh, hung up on some doctrines here. Mm -hmm. So it, I was glad that you uh, brought that up, and um, well, we can maybe address that a little bit here today. Yeah, it came into Christianity at a certain point, uh, the train wreck mm -hmm. at Nicaea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, I was looking through uh, fossilized customs, and I ran across here on um, page 171, and the question you wrote is, is Yahuwah a trinity? Well, is Yahuwah one, or does he present himself as whatever he wills to? I will be who I will be. That's Ahia, Asher Ahia in Hebrew. That makes us stop and wonder about all that he's capable of becoming. Yahuwah is not a man, but his spirit. He's not a committee, nor is he a multiple personality. The manifestation of his name has appeared to us in various ways and forms. And if you, you can see Hebrews 1 for that. In these last days, he came in the appearance of human flesh as our deliverer, an atoning offering once for all. His name reflects deliverance. As our healer, he's known as Yahuwah Rapha. As our creator, Yahuwah Elohim. As our shepherd, Yahuwah Roi. As a man of war, Yahuwah Sabaoth. As provider, Yahuwah Yira, and as our prevailer, or banner, Yahuwah Nisi, as our deliverer, Yahusha. Yahuwah, I am your deliverer. Now the Shema tells us, and, and the word Shema means hear, hear, O Yeshua, Yahuwah our Elohim. Yahuwah is one. Love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So the words Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya mean, I will be whom I will be. The four vowels of the name have been transliterated as Jehovah, Yahuwah, 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 Yahweh, and the, in the, the Greek, I-A-U-E and I-A-O-U-E, etc. The name, or this name, means all three of the following. I was, I am, and I will be. I am the Aleph and the Ta says the Sovereign Yahuwah, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. In other words, Shaddai. Revelation 1.8, the speaker was Yahusha, speaking to Yehuchanan, or John, on the Isle of Patmos. Men who interpret the writings with their own preconceived ideas can put a spin on them, making them seem to say things they don't say. They will admit that Moshe and Daniel didn't think there was a trinity, but they claim there was a progressive revelation later on. If there were a trinity, then surely there would have been a great deal of explanation given in the writings, because it goes against everything the scriptures ever taught. We can't have monotheism and trinitarianism. It just does, it can't happen. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, Yahshiahu or Isaiah 42 eight. I am the first, I am the last. Apart from me, there is no Elohim. That's Isaiah 44, 6. Is there any Elohim besides me? 44, 8. I am Elohim, there is no other. I am Elohim, and there is none like me. 46, 9. Before me, no Elohim was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am Yahuwah, and apart from me, there is no deliverer. That's Yeshua 43, 11. Yahuwah is infinite in power, space, and time. He's not a multiple personality, nor is he a committee but he can be anything or anywhere he wills to be. Zechariah, or Zechariah 12.10, reveals who died at Golgotha. They will look upon me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Now there's 
trinities worldwide, and they're all from pagan influence. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop there, um, but if you want to further follow this in fossilized customs, it goes on with quite a bit more information uh, about all the different uh, foundations for this Trinity doctrine. But I thought that was pretty good right there. It kind of sums it up uh, quite well. And then your article, too, um, I thought that was really good, how you pointed out a lot of these same things here. And uh, uh, would, would you would you want to comment on, on the article you wrote, Lou? Yes. Uh, something new popped in my head uh, that wasn't really new. I've thought about it for years. But how did this reincarnation thing come into play in Hinduism and all these other religions from the East? And it occurred to me that it is all connected. And I saw this <clears throat> this movie being uh, displayed uh, on you know advertisements. It's called the Revenant, and it's uh, I looked up the definition that they intended for this Revenant, and it apparently is someone who reappears after they've died, and they uh, and they remember <clears throat> events from a past life. And uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. Of course, it's brand new. But then yeah, I related that, that to... That you brought up that word, though. Yeah, I brought yeah. up the word Revenant. And that uh, made me think, rethink the ideas about reincarnation and trinities and the connection between them. And, the mm -hmm. and, and what you're about to read is going to explain that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, can, uh, I can read this here, the article that you sent me. Um, it has the Shema in it uh, starting out, but... Yeah. I already read that, so I'm going to start a little further into it here. Um, the consulate that, that uh, we always need to remember is always stand on the truth. The Trinity is not a teaching found in the writings of truth, but it is found in every pagan culture. Trinitarian ideas originate from Babel and linked to reincarnation. So we have Nimrod. Well, a revenant? Hmm. Nimrod was killed and then believed to be the sun reborn on that winter solstice as Tammuz. The rebirth of the sun was associated with Nimrod, who became a type of revenant, in other words, a person returning from the dead, possessing the consciousness of a former life. That sounds like reincarnation. This produced a triune doctrine involving three, Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Trinitarianism is one of those weak and miserable principles based on pagan fertility practices Paul had alluded to at Galatians 4.9. The worship of the host of heaven, which is also known as astrology, hides in birthday rituals stemming from the ancestor worship Hinduism. Astrology leads to beliefs in other myths like reincarnation. The hour, the month, the day of their birth assigns them a zodiac sign, horoscope. That comes from two different words, horo and scopos, means our watchers. I remember that. All sun worship deities were believed to have been born at the winter solstice, and the name of the king of Babel, Nimrod, was babbled and took the forms of these different deities. I can't pronounce them because if we remember Exodus 23:13, we're not to allow the names of foreign mighty ones to be heard on our lips. Uh, the Hindu Trinity, uh, B R A H M A V I S H N U and S H I B A, came from India to the Middle East around 200 BCE from the ancient trade route known as the Silk Road. Sun worship and its trinities dominated the Greek, Egyptian, Celtic, Mandaean, Indian, and Roman cultures. All solar deities are false Nimrod revenants. He was the first mighty one of heathen myth. He was becoming all these names. Um, and he was worshipped as each culture's sun deity. Uh, the myth of Santa is the modern-day version of Nimrod. Babel's trinity pattern was inherited with familiar pagan symbols, in other words, crosses and steeples, pillars. Constantine's Edict of 321 mentions the day of the sun is a day of rest to honor Sol Invictus, the unconquerable sun, basically. Every pagan custom became adopted and mixed into his Christianity. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 declares the greatest instruction. Yahuwah is one. Yaakov, or uh, they call him James, 219. 
you believe that Elohim is one. Well, good for you. Even the demons believe this and tremble. Trinities are lies, plain and simple. Show us the Father, says Philip. Well, Yahushua said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. That's at Yahushua in 14. No one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom he reveals. Matthew 11, 27. Now we have Alexandria circus father, Athanasius, who was a 27-year-old attendee at Nicaea in 325 CE. Well, he asserted that salvation requires the belief in one G-O-D in three persons. Uh, that's definitely right from Catholicism. This dogma is essential to be a Catholic. It's not a teaching from the word of truth. Babel's witchcraft spread itself with halos, three-faced statues, six-armed images, steeples, domes, and a variety of fertility and solar symbols. Sophists bring up an idea, and then texts are hunted down, in other words, proof texting, with the intent to deceive. This process is called eisegesis. Now, the school of Alexandria transformed sun worship in this way so the masses would relate to it readily. Athanasius, Constantine's advisor from Alexandria and Nicaea in 325 CE, asserted that Catholicism is the worship of one G.O.D. and three persons. This is the critical doctrine believed to save a person. Well, Acts 20:28 20, says the Ruach HaKadosh purchased us with his own blood. Catholicism's sacraments are useless Roman exercises in futility invented by men. There was something else I, I wanted to bring up and and share with our listeners here, Lou, and that was the fact that um, there's a lot of folks out there that they read the King James Version, and they don't realize, probably, that it is actually a translation from the Latin Vulgate. And if you go to uh, First Yehuchanan, or First John, chapter 5, and you read verse 7 in the King James, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now that is not in the original writing, okay? It's not in any of the manuscripts before the 10th century, and it was first initiated at the Council of Lateran in the year 1215, and it is of pagan origin, and it means the trident of the person. And also, this is an interpolation, not an interpretation. Now what it should actually say if you go to the BYND at verse 7, because there are three who bear witness, the Ruach and the water and the blood, and these three are in agreement. So what they've done in the King James is they've used that as verse 8. So they've basically given it, they've given the same verse, a part A and a part B, to deceive people into believing that there's this Trinity doctrine, and then they're saying that it's scriptural. Nothing could be further from the truth. I wanted to bring that up because I think that's an important aspect that a lot of Christians don't really realize. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Luke? Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. That's one of the first things that they go to, and it's the misunderstanding. Um, it's like lost in translation, and uh, doctrines are built upon mistranslations. Uh, mm -hmm. There's many of those, and <clears throat> we remember the meeting uh, in the upper room where a little Eutychus fell out of the window and all that. They, they are, they're, they've created a picture in their minds that that was in the morning um, at a, you know, they were breaking bread or uh, transubstantiating bread and uh, having a meal. But that, that wasn't what was happening, you know? No. It was something else. And they just put this in people's minds and that's pretty much all they, they the, the whole thing is, like they're hypnotized and they just when they hear that verse or those words they they just take running off down the road in their minds that that, that they know what that means so the translations do have errors and that's not because Yahuwah intended that he, he wanted us to know the truth and uh, when we do discover the truth the truth sets us free from their dominating doctrines Mm -hmm. They ought to look at this video online about the uh, Catholic Circus and the development of all their dogmas, and it's called Timeline. 
It was, oh yeah, that's I, a good one. That, uh, I put it up a couple of maybe two, two and a half years ago, and it uh, just goes from one thing to the next thing, and over the years and centuries, even up to the current modern day, there's still dogmas being added. Well, you know, the funny thing I noticed about that too is, if you have truth, it doesn't change. But when they have dogmas, first they believe in it, well, then they drop it, and yeah. uh, then they get back to it. So yeah. it's like, what is that? You know, <laughs> yeah. what's that about? Wow. Yeah, that's uh, it's all basically their misunderstanding because they don't have Yahusha's spirit, and we know that because the one who says I know him but does not obey his commandments is a liar. And the theologians are standing up there saying, yes, I know him, and let me teach you. And they're te being taught by people that don't even know him. Well, one of the big things, too, um, as you mentioned uh, in some of our previous talks, back in 2008, the Catholic Circus passed a papal bull uh, stating that it was against their dogma, their rules, yeah to uh, use the name Yahuwah in any type of worship or prayer or hymn or anything like that. So if you have, if you don't have the name, okay, the name we found out is the key of understanding. If you don't have the name, you're not going to understand the word. Proverbs 30, verse 4. That's right. Yep. Yeah. The, the covenant stone, the, the gate stone down in Las Lunas, uh, has the name in series, series in several places, and uh, to just expunge the name and and put in a, a, a translation that uh, w would mean the adversary, you know, B E L or B A A L, which mm -hmm. is translated from the, the Hebrew into the Greek as Kyrios and into the Latin as Dominus, and then into the King James version because they were using the Latin Vulgate, Dominus transforms into Lord. And that's uh, a lot of the viewers here may know that from watching videos and understanding, but a lot of viewers in the future are not going to know this, and that, so I just brought, wanted to bring that out. But we're not worshiping uh, the sky deity uh, or the storm deity of the Canaanites. No, that was, that was what the controversy was at Mount yeah. Carmel. Yeah, at Mount Carmel, there it is. Mount yep. Carmel. And that's uh, Second Kings chapter or First Kings, chapter 18, I believe. I believe it, yeah. I believe it is, yeah. Well, you know, there's that's happening again, that Mount Carmel experience here. You got people running into steeples calling on the Lord, you know, yeah. and uh, thinking that uh, they're calling on our Creator, when yeah. in reality and truth they're not. And, um, you know, it's, the name is being revealed around the world, and you're hearing a little bit more here and here, small pockets, small groups, that are saying the name. And that's, that's a good thing, and it also tells, me, tells us where we are in the stream of time. Yeah, we're at the end of the last days, really. Mm -hmm. The things that are about to happen are going to happen rapidly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be horrifying, and we won't be able to tell people over the Internet because there will be no Internet. That's right. Yep. Use your time wisely. Yeah. Learn those commandments. Learn his name. And get busy. Start becoming a useful vessel so that other people will hear and you don't just keep this to yourself. That's right. That's what we're doing. We're trying to wake people up and tell them the truth. And we enjoy doing that. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. To know that you have the truth and Yahushua is empowering us to know and to teach his word and his name. Well, we have to all, you know, also keep in mind, too, that you know, to, when we teach people, when we point out the truth, we do it in love. And uh, remember that Yahushua didn't use a sledgehammer and beat anybody over the head with doctrines. That's right. He invited them to follow him. Yeah. Come, follow me. Yeah. He who has That's ears, let him hear. That's right. The truth, uh, w the truth is something that it, it just rings in your mind right, you know, it makes sense. But when you start thinking about Ouija boards, astrology, horoscopes, reincarnation, it, none of it seems to connect at all. It's all no, disjointed. It's, it there's, there's no continuity to it's it. It's about magic. I mean, Acts chapter 19 was 
describing all these people in Ephesus that were doing uh, magical spells and things, and they brought their scrolls out into the marketplace and they burned them, and there was a great value uh, put in, on them, and they also to, uh, destroyed their idols. And, mm -hmm. it, and uh, the, the, the Nazarene that had visited and spoken the truth to them were reaching their hearts and they were changing. And the truth was setting them free from this idolatry. Mm -hmm. And check, it's Acts chapter 19. That's right. Well, it's, it's like what you, uh, what you had outlined in your article there um, about the... Uh, Oh, I think where was that on the second page it was about the miserable principles that they were basically falling back into. Yeah. <clears throat> because you know they, it wasn't it wasn't keeping the feast days. <laughs> you know, like like uh, Christians were were teaching uh, people. You know, weak and miserable principles. Yep, based on pagan fertility practice. Yeah, that's what yeah. the, they were falling back into their old ways because they were right. they were foundationally first Christians, and Paul was reaching them with the truth, and he said, "Am I wasting my my efforts on you?" You know. Well, and, they uh, were being dogs returning to the vomit. Yeah, exactly. Peter. Yeah. Talking. Well, yeah, you uh, have to you have to be uh, careful and and search the word to see if these things are so. Well, like the Bereans did, yeah. They listened to a lot of different doctrines and a lot of different things were being taught, but, you know, uh, they uh, they definitely went to the Scriptures and they read and checked out to make sure that what they were being told was true. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you brought up, too, you know, about Jesus, you know, and, and there's so much of that going on in Christian circles today. You know, they, they take a preconceived idea and they look for Scripture to support it, and it's a house of cards. It's not going to work. And it's, you know, the proof texting and all that stuff. And that's one of the reasons that there's so many different uh, circuses out there all reading the same book. And uh, it just, there's there's no truth there. Yeah, and there's I, I a lot of circuses, was, uh, but no a truth. Good point that uh, you brought up in that article. Yeah, there was a place, uh, it's regarding the, the festivals. They're coming upon us. In Deuteronomy 4, I believe, it talks about when these words come upon you in the, in, in the end times, in the last days. Mm -hmm. In all the places where I scattered you, you will hear the word and do the, do the word and in, their, in the place where you're scattered. And then right. uh, that's going to change the generation in that realm, wherever it is, just before he comes back. And that's what's happening. Everywhere in the world, there's people hearing it. In New Zealand, Australia, Britain, uh, any, all, well, all the English-speaking countries. Well, that's the, uh, the idea behind that scripture that says, um, and this is for a generation yet to be created. That they might call on the name. Exactly. That's why it's written. It says yep. so. This is written. That's right. Anyway, the festivals are becoming apparent, and they're uh, not just for the Jews, they're for all the tribes, and mm -hmm. he's restoring the understanding of that they're a redemption plan, and it's about him. It's not about our conduct, it's about us recognizing the, the appointments. And uh, it's interesting because in one place we read in Nehemiah, or Nechemia, chapter 8, I think it's around verse 17, but it, or 19, 17 through 19, it says, since the days of Yahusha, or Yeshua, and that's a shorter spelling, it's the hypocharisma, uh, the diminutive mm -hmm. form of, right. uh, of the name Yahusha, the son of Nun, it's, uh, Ezra's uh, reading the Torah to them, and they're, they're in the seventh month. Uh, it starts out talking about the first day of the seventh month, which is, you know, Yom Teruah, the old um, yeah. they're, they built this big stage, and Ezra, one of the scribes, and uh, you know, he's also a priest, Kohenim, one of the Kohenim, and he's reading, and the people are getting real sad, and they're going, "Oh, wait a minute! Don't be sad. This is a time of, you know, joy, great joy," and because here's why they got sad: 
because they had not observed the festival since the days of Yahusha, the servant of uh, Musha, the, uh, the one they called Joshua. Now that, the Exodus was in around 1446 B BCE. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, <laughs> almost yep. 1500 years BCE. And and then here we are rebuilding the temple and the walls of, of the city after the 70 year captivity and the governor is Nehemiah, Nehemiah. And that's around 538 BCE. So they're mm -hmm. reading this and it's about 900, a little over 900 years since they've observed the appointments. But they didn't, they wouldn't know what they meant unless Yahushua opened their minds. But now here in the last of the last days, we know what the redemptive plan is all about because it's in the festivals. Right, it's all and laid out. It's, it's all laid out. The Passover lamb, and then you've got the Bikarim, which is the resurrection during the same week of Matzah. And then 50 days later from the Bikarim, you've got uh, the seventh, uh, I mean the, uh, the festival of Shabuot, which is, uh, you know, the giving of the t pouring out of the spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, into the Nazarene. The first Nazarene received the Ruach HaKodesh on Shabbat at the uh, commemoration of the giving of Torah at Sinai. Mm -hmm. And then the seventh day festival, seventh month fe festivals, is mm -hmm. uh, what Nehemiah chapter 8 is describing. So, uh, wow, we, we understand not only that we should be doing them, but we have to we have to understand what the meaning behind them is and we and we're getting clarity because of his spirit in us right yep it's great yeah it's you have the overwhelming majority of christianity teaching that it's a a slap in the face to the creator to be observing the feast days and obeying commandments is oh that's oh, a, yeah. the truth is maligned so even the even the, the few small groups out there that are teaching uh, to be observant of the commandments, there's there's a couple that I can think of, but they they uh, basically disregard the festivals, and some of them, uh, well, they just kind of don't really see the importance of it. But the other ones are, are denying them vehemently, yeah. and I that's that's a travesty right there, yeah. and their idea of this gospel, if you will, is that. Some guy named Christ was nailed on a cross, okay, back in 34 A.D. That's the gospel. And that, you know, that that's not the gospel. That's not the Besorah. Okay, it, it's part of it, but it's not the, the Besorah. It's not the good news. The good news is everything that he went through when he was here to work out the plan of redemption and restoration. It's a restoration of all things. It's coming. Yeah. Removing the name allowed the adversary to teach the masses, to, uh, well, you know, the wrong name, basically ascribing the, the things that Yahushua did to someone else, probably the, the adversary. But uh, mm -hmm. Yahushua said um, um, it was a, a matter of leaven. Uh, if a, a little bit of leaven which is error and men's teachings, leavens the whole lump. In other words, the whole world is in the power of the adversary because they're all sitting there going, hey, where's the sacraments? I've got to get at them. But sacramentum is the origin of the word sacrament, and it was the yeah. oath of a, of a Roman soldier to Caesar. That's what the word comes from. And uh, mm -hmm. the sacraments kept be added, if you watch that mo that uh, video that I put up called Timeline, it gives you the year and the, the century that each dogma appeared. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, I think if, if you know, folks out there, if they can... Uh, read the book Fossilized Customs. It's a real eye-opener. I mean, you know, there's, there's so much stuff in there. It's like, yeah, you got to read it 
more than one or two or three times because it's, there's so much in there that it just takes a while to sink in. I mean, you know, it's you're going to see things that, you know, you glossed over the first time or second time or third time. I mean, I, I, I don't know how many times I've read it, and I'm still uh, seeing things jump out there off the page at me. But, uh, you know, I know definitely that, that that was an inspired work by Yusha. Uh, it was the reason he created me. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. I'm done fulfilling his purposes. But, you know, there was a prisoner who got thrown back in prison. I don't know if, it, if you've seen that little clip or video I made of, about that. But uh, this prisoner wrote me a letter, and he said that his mother died, and it caused him to, he he taught everything to his mother after he got out of prison for 13 years, um, everything about Yahusha. And she died a few years later, and Yahusha's name was on her lips as he, she was dying. Wow, yeah. It was so beautiful to hear that a prisoner went to prison to learn the truth, found it, taught his mother, and then he told me he went back into his old ways because the death of his mother was traumatic. And then mm -hmm. he got rearrested and thrown back in prison for five more years. And he walked yeah. into his room at where his roommate was waiting for him, and he saw a copy of the book Fossilized Customs laying on the, on the man's bed. And he said, hey, can I read that book? Because that, that's the book that got him and, uh, mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah. And he was desiring to have a copy of it, but his roommate said, oh, you can have that book. That guy's crazy. That Lou White, yeah. <laughs> he's out of his mind. <laughs> well, yeah. okay. Well, you know, that's a that's a prime example of um, you know not having eyes to see or ears to hear. Well, if you obey commandments, you're going to be in a good crowd. But if you let the ones who are lawless become more lawless, and the ones who are more law keeping become more law keeping, more righteous, so you can't get close to Yahuwah while you're a sinner just believing that he died for you. That's not, the, no. that's not the message. You have to stop sinning and apologize and that's right. be immersed and then he will give you his spirit because you obey him and then he'll continue to grow in you. It's Well, and, and see, that's the thing. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that the, the restrainer, okay, is the lawless one, he, and he's restraining the truth by keeping people under his thumb with false doctrine. Yeah. And that's something that Christianity, um, I don't know if they really understand that, because uh, so many that I've talked to um, over the years, they believe that the restrainer is the set-apart spirit, and that that is simply not true. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the one that's restraining the truth is what you have to be concerned about. Exactly. You know, you yeah. should, he wants all people to understand. Um, uh, but they uh, set it up uh, differently uh, after a few hundred years. Really, uh, they started to try to exterminate the first Nazarene right there on the spot, trying to kill Shaul in the, in the book of Acts. Luke, mm -hmm. wrote, Luke wrote the book of Acts. Why were they trying to exterminate uh, Shaul? He was making too much noise, yeah. off on the feathers. Well, he knew more than they did, actually. And <laughs> yeah. He said, hey, this is the Yahusha, is, is the son of Elohim. And he started teaching it. <laughs> yeah. 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 He, was, he was traumatized at first. He, he was blinded when he was trying to enter Damascus. But that's, the, that's where a whole bunch of Nazarene were in Damascus. Mm -hmm. uh, Hananya and Kananya, and uh, that's uh, where he first met one of the Nazarene. And Kananya was terrified because Yahusha came to him and said, hey, uh, go over here to this street called Straight. Uh, I've got a man named Shaul that I want you to, well, I, I want you to receive, I want him to receive his sight and to receive the real Kakadash. Oh, man, we talking about that guy. He's, he's, he's killing us and after us and everything. <laughs> he's after us. Haven't you heard? He's trying to tell <laughs> you. 
yeah. a chosen vessel of mine. Yeah. Well, I bet you Shaul experienced some real cognitive dissonance. Oh, yeah. Cognitive dissonance. Yeah. That's that, you know, the, the, the uh, what was that it was written? I forget who wrote it. Maybe it was, uh, mm, no, I don't know. I, don't remember, I can't think of his name. But anyways, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the truth, initial commotion is directly proportionate to how deeply a lie was believed. Yeah, that's Dresden. Uh, Dresden James. James. That's who it was. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's true because, you know, you tell people the truth and, no, nah, I can't be. Yeah, yeah, you're nuts, you know. Yeah. And then a, uh, they think about it for a while and it, it just makes them, it just messes with them. And um, it, it bothers them. And they and they may not say anything to you, but it, it just messes up their, their thinking. And then over time, if they're actually, you know, seeking truth or they care enough about it, uh, that sort of sinks in and they do whatever they can to make that brain buzzing go away. <laughs> yeah, that pain, the dissonance, the horrible conflicts with what they believe and what's reality. Yeah. It's a conflict between reality and the imaginary cartoon world that the pastors have been putting in their head. Right. And Catholics use like stained glass windows. Thing. Reality and the, on our perception of reality. Yeah. Two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the Catholic circus, which I spent my first 18 years inside and uh, was taught by these people, I, I had all kinds of weird Nimrod ideas about praying to the dead, necromancy. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, uh, it, it's just mind control. You know. Yeah, I did too. I had the same thing. Yeah. It's really good to get out of that nonsense. Yeah. Well, you really don't know what to do or where to go unless someone is sent to you, and then you can speak the name Yahusha, and they'll say, well, who's Yahusha? I have uh, Christian pastors on YouTube that I leave comments on, and I'm kind with them. I'm not, you know, telling them that, you know, they're or damned or anything. I'm just saying, well, yeah. have you thought of this? And kindly. And then I usually always use the name Yahusha, and they ask me, who's Yahusha? They don't even know. Right. Yeah. And I, one of your um, short videos that you did, uh, the title of it was the question, why I don't use the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. And I think you had a little, you had a little thing in there that says, when the lie is exposed, it's over. Yeah. And and, and that's true. I mean, once <laughs> once the truth is revealed, the lie is is over with. I mean. <laughs> yeah, the lie is cooked. It's roasted. It's cooked. There's yep. no way to go back to it and go, hey, this is going to still work. No, it didn't. It's not going to work. Yeah. Not unless you prefer darkness over light. Yeah, you have to close your mind. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, he wants yeah. us to reason with him. What, what is, uh, you know, let us reason together yeah, with yeah, his, his spirit, and you, you can really understand. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, well, we got quite a bit extra uh, stuff here we talked about. Oh, yeah, I'm keeping, it's recording. Yeah, I, was, I thought you still was recording, yeah. Yeah. I'm having a little trouble hearing you on this, this new phone I got here. I are you? Well, the, the field on this phone may not be real big. Yeah. If I get real close, it, it's it's better. Yeah, as long as, I guess you can hear me okay, right? I sure can, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can hear you fine. It's uh, You're about four inches away from the microphone. Doesn't and, sound like I'm talking through a kazoo or wax paper or whatever. No, not too bad. No, it's not okay, that well, bad. I, I, There's, I'm trying, uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, those uh, night well. lights, you know, barn lights that have the big scoop around them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you can picture the one, but I've got this big plastic reflective uh, dome over uh, 
the whole microphone apparatus, and your voice is right in the center of it. So, oh, well, the, it's not a CIA listening device, is it? No, no, it's not oh, like that. Okay. Uh, it could be converted, I'm sure. It probably could but, be. Yeah, yeah, I could uh, aim this dish at somebody uh, down the street, <laughs> you know, and I, I could get a laser beam and bounce it off their window and listen to them. There you go. That's what that's a, that's what they like to do to me. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, the things we're talking about, they need to be heard. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the one that we did last month was uh, super successful. Let me look and see how many people have seen that one. And there, and it's continuing to run down the road, so you never know. Let's see. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. People are leaving lots of comments on it. Uh, we must have gotten their attention. Let's yeah, see. they must have. Well, that's a good thing, so, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Huh? Well, okay, here we go. I have to find the, the channel first, and then... Uh, so what's been going on with your, uh, with your life in general? Are you still taking care of your mom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're still doing that, taking turns. It's, um, it, it, Gina and I are just such... Uh, misfits in my family because we <laughs> we're way different than everybody else. They're all bickering, you know, back and forth about each other, to each other, or to me about somebody else. And it's like, you know what? I I'm just, you know, I'm not a person to to take sides. I'll offer an opinion in a nice way about what I see, yeah. and um, but I, I I'm not one to, you know, I'm not going to try to influence anything either way. And, you know, that's, that's what happens when you're dealing with um, people who are very stuck Rebellion. in their yeah. re religion and their ways. Yeah. There's no flexibility there. And um, it's like trying to push a chain. It, you know, it... <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's tough. Yeah, it's yeah tough. It, it is. You know, and everybody's, you know, on edge about every little thing and... I don't know, we're just so different than that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you just want to sort of withdraw from it, but you, you still got to be part of it. I mean, yeah. commandment number five, respect your father and your mother, there you know. Go. Yeah, so, because you never know what's going to happen with the, the, the person. Um, right, right. You don't know, and even if they don't react, yeah. um, the words that are being dropped on their ears, yeah. uh, they have an effect, whether we know it or not. And uh, the spiritual realm is like super active in my mom's house. I mean, you can almost see the the, the activity seeping through the walls over there. It's such a Catholic house, and it's like, uh, and <laughs> yeah. But we know that where two or more are gathered in you, His name, He's there. So. When Gina and I are over there, we we don't worry about any of that stuff. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's very important that we don't never give up, never surrender. Just keep doing yeah. what you're doing. You know, it's that's part of the abide in my word. Abide. Yeah. Just yep. keep abiding. Abiding. Mm -hmm. And have nothing but hope. And uh, was it the one that we did on Pentecost? Well, I think we did one on Pentecost, yeah. Three weeks ago, you and me are in this, and it says, what is Pentecost, the only annual appointment that escaped the wrath of the dragon? Yeah, I think that may have been it. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, yeah, El Shabbat was last month, so I think it was the day after we spoke with yeah. Shabbat. Well, it's in three weeks, it's climbed from uh, to up to 833 views. Well, that's pretty good. Big let me, number. Let me see if there's any likes. Well, there's, yeah, there you are. It says no dislikes. Everybody likes it, and uh, mm -hmm. 82 likes. And I, I think uh, people have used that video to subscribe. 
Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. They might be a little, you know, I don't know how that YouTube stuff works with likes and dislikes. I mean, I don't, I don't really know anything about that, but I think people are more apt to just view it and not say like or dislike unless it really gets on their nerves. Then they're going to put a dislike up there. Yeah. And that's just the spirit that's controlling them. That's all. Yeah, that's all. I mean, it's the same spirit, just different actors in the game. Yeah. <clears throat> There's something going on because a ton of people have, uh, you know, been influenced by that video. Well, it's something that I think they've, they've all been uh, exposed to, is that Pentecost thing in the Christian realm, yeah. but they've never heard what it's really about. Yeah. I mean, I know when I was in Christianity, I thought Pentecost was the, quote, birthday of the Christian circus. What a lie. Yeah, that's what they've been telling people. Well, yeah, that's what, that's what all the Christians. Taught every every school Christianity you go to teaches that it's the birthday of the Christian <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> really, uh, the biggest train wreck was Nicaea. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's when that all the stuff that really was a convert. silver streak piling up there. Oh man, I bet it was. <laughs> it must have been really moving. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if he was pulling people. Uh, youngins that were in the, you know, Alexandria area in, into his little meeting, it must, have t it must have taken a long time to assemble over 200 elders, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have taken a bit to assemble that. Yeah. Well, I mean... Alexandria, Egypt, okay. How many times did they burn the library there to try to get rid of the real history? Well, at least three on record. Yeah. So, you know, you know they're trying to cover something up. Yeah. Yeah, and now that with, uh, with the recent findings and or ongoing findings about Dead Sea Scrolls, I mean, look at, you know, the Jesuit scroll team is really scrambling to keep that under wraps, but they're losing. Oh, yeah. More and more people are finding out that, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls are, you know, written in the original Hebrew and there's no gnats and twiddly diddles on yeah. the letters and yeah. all that stuff. <clears throat> I was explaining that to a nice lady that uh, visited us. She's a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, she's pretty um, knowledgeable about scripture, uh, quote, I mean quoting scripture. She knows where things are. She's, she's probably close to 70, um, but she has a pretty good mind, And uh, but she really enjoyed our conversation. She's not one of those pushy ones that comes around trying to, you know, impose doc their doctrines on you. She come over for a lunch. She's a friend of Gina's, and she came over for lunch one day, and we had a nice discussion about stuff, and she was... Uh, she was, I think, surprised that I was able to explain what I explained to her from the Hebrew perspective, because she thought she knew Hebrew letters and all that, so I pointed out some things. And uh, she was talking about Aramaic and all that. I said, well, that's not, that's misleading. I said, it's not Aramaic. I said, it's basically Babylonian. I said, that was our, our captor's uh, script. When they were under captivity, they learned the ways of the uh, the Babylonians, and they got away from the original Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew script, which they couldn't read after a while because they'd been indoctrinated. So I says I explained to her the difference between the original and then the uh, the Babylonian or the square script or flame letters, like some of them call it. I says there's little Likud marks. And that cued the reader on to say the, the uh, word Adonai instead of the name, because the name was the press. Uh, she's a little hung up on Jehovah. Yeah. Uh, but Even I though did you've explain. explained the letter J, right? Right. I explained that the letter J is less than 500 years old, yeah. so that can't be. Um, so, But she's, she's a little hung up on that. But uh, but it was it was a good, interesting conversation. So maybe, I mean, she, she was very... Uh, 
appreciative and, mm. and uh, of our visit, and I'm sure she's going to come back again. Yeah. Well, you've put inf you've put ammunition in her brain that's going to mm -hmm. make her, you know, ruminate on it, and there'll be uh, some changes in her heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, I was going to mention <clears throat> this is something to just be aware of when we talk to people who resist obedience it's it's not ever going to be good if they stay like that but one of the things that we have to kind of step lightly around these people's hearts and when we and to be you know tender hearted towards them is right. because what i mentioned earlier in this video recording about it had been over 900 years since the returning is uh, Yahudim to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls in the temple, uh, mm -hmm. funded by the uh, the guy that sent them. Uh, it was pretty cool, but uh, uh, anyway, the fact that they'd been without their festivals for so long means that Daniel did not observe the festivals. Yeah, uh, because how could he? You know, I, I, right? If you if it wasn't you know, it's something that he had access to know. You see, the Torah was kind of here and there. It was it just discovered when they got back. When they came back to Jerusalem, they found a copy. And mm -hmm. uh, that means that maybe Daniel didn't have all of it, you know. It's, he may not have. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got to consider Zechariah, or Zechariah. He was there when it, with the returning uh, Israelites. Uh, mm -hmm. the, to returning Yahudim, and he's listed in Nehemia chapter uh, eight, I think, and uh, he didn't keep even even the prophet that wrote about Sukkoth uh, mm -hmm. in chapter fourteen didn't keep it. He didn't observe Sukkoth. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know apparent that you know this is critical for something to for us to be gentle with people. And not condemning or judgmental, because right, they don't keep right. it at the right time. You know, there's it. It, it should be a, a great effort put forth to keep it at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people are dismissing people and tell them they're not going to make it because you're not keeping it on the right day. Well, yeah. how about those 900 plus years that all the people of Yahua didn't do anything? You know, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be uh, careful that we don't feel that stuff in our hearts and mm -hmm. and, and condemn each other. And I mean, they, I mean, they're doing their best. Well, the, the important aspect of that, um, okay, if you there's basically, well, you can look at it two ways. Okay, uh, to be in captivity, you can be in captivity physically. Okay, where you don't have access to reading material, or you can't do what you what you would normally be able to do if you were free. But uh, on the spiritual aspect of it, okay, what about the stronghold, the mental stronghold? That is mental captivity, and that's put there by the enemy of soul, and that's not necessarily your doing. Um, it's it's a matter of, you know, you feel comfortable with it after a while because it becomes your your the norm for you. And when you wake someone up out of that or you set them free from that, however you go about doing that, and it can be a real shock. And you know, that's, I know we've talked about that before, but that's, that's exactly why it's important to be, you know, uh, gentle when explaining these things to people because they they don't know and they don't know that they don't know. <laughs> that's yeah, right. I always happen to say that, but, um, but yeah, it can be uh, uh, it can be too much of an eye opener too soon, and uh, people can shut down. So it's just, it's just the way, you know, we have to always keep that in mind. Yeah. And I always make it a point, I know when I'm talking to Christians, it's like we don't observe the feast days thinking that's going to save us. 
Okay, we don't observe the commandments thinking that's going to save us. And this is something that I've gathered reading these uh, newsletters from these other Christian offshoot groups out there. that we keep the feast days because that's because we won't aid without keeping them because we have to so they're saying that that's a way of salvation by works that's not why we keep the feast days see they don't understand that and if you can explain it to people who have that mindset you know in such a way that they can understand it then maybe it'll help them to not be so staunch against Okay, we want to be in the covenant, a covenant relationship with them. We keep the commandments for the same reason, the Torah, because he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But, you know, the Sabbath isn't just the seventh day of the week that he's talking about. Okay, the Sabbath also includes the high Sabbaths, which are the appointed times. So, you know, no, keeping them is not going to save us, but... It's almost like a catch-22. When you know the truth, okay, and you don't observe it, then you're held accountable for it. But the truth has to be settled in a person's mind. They have to be not only convinced, but they have to be convicted, okay? And then once they act on that or choose not to act on that, that's going to be the determining factor on whether or not they are basically blasphemic, okay, the set apart spirit. Yeah, the de and the, the doers of the word will be declared right. That's right. Yeah. And that's why we can't judge anyone. No. Because we don't know what's going on inside their mind. Yeah. We have a righteous judge. He knows their hearts. And he knows that's where right. they're going to be. And he's going to complete the work that he started in them. So we can't look at them as incomplete or ourselves and say, from maybe a, a slightly a, a advanced place in the race and say, uh, wow, you're not going to make it. <laughs> well, we can't be saying that. We have no, to be we're no. encouragers. That's what we are. Come on, you can do it. You know, you don't understand it right now. But a lot of the prophets wrote things down that they didn't understand. They had belief, and that was... I don't know how this is going to work, but I don't even know what I'm saying, but I'm writing it down for, because I'm, I, I was told to. Right. Yeah. So yep. It's, uh, it, you know, at Hebrews uh, chapter 11, you know. Oh, yeah. Yep. There was a scripture that I ran across this morning when I was paging through um, the writings, and, you know, I don't, <laughs> I, just, I don't remember where it was, but... It had to do with, um, in, in the house, meaning the body, in the house, there are many vessels. Oh, yeah. And some are, are uh, like, useful vessels, and some are unuseful Yeah, vessels. just for show, yeah. Yeah, but... You know, in any event, they are still all vessels in the house. So one is not to be looked down on or cast aside like, well, you know, you're not important or you'll never amount to anything or, you know, we can't do that. And I forget where that was I was looking at, but I happened to see that. And uh, it just sort of, I don't know why I saw that. I made note of it. I should have wrote down it to book chapter and verse of it yeah. but it uh, it made perfect sense it said, I don't know for some reason when I read the scripture this morning it's like man I had a perfectly crystal clear understanding of everything I read and it was like it was just right there I was tuned into it and um, that doesn't always happen to me but I thought that was really uh, really something and a real, real clear understanding of everything I was reading so it's like uh, Yahushua was there, you know, showing me, you know, what he wanted me oh, to. Oh, I know what that verse is. I just looked it up uh, where it's found. It, it talks about there in a household there's 
various vessels. Some are made of wood, and some yeah, are made yeah, of silver, yeah. and some are made of gold. <laughs> right. Well, I don't have any gold, and I, no, uh, I, I don't either. I'm, yeah, but uh, I certainly don't have any gold, any gold vessels. <laughs> no. No. No, if uh, if I did, I'd turn it into something else real quick. Yeah. Yeah. What type but, of vessel? But you see, you see what the spiritual application of that is. Second Timothy two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm As we're vessels. Absolutely. Yeah. Or a conduit. Well, yeah, and and it is no longer I who live. Galatians five verse twenty, I think it says, uh, it's no no longer I who live, but Mashiach lives in me, which is right. the vessel that we can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and the one those that, of us that are believers yeah. and doers are all Mashiach. Yeah, we're all the walking, talking voice of the of the Shepherd Himself. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. we're called to do these things. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, I, I don't know about uh, about you, but I know when I was in Christianity early on, <laughs> I thought the the name, I thought the the word Christ was just the last name. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of like, people do. They still do. Yeah, I know. So and it's like, and, and it's the Hebrew uh, or the Greek Messiah. And, and Hebrew Mashiach, um, if you don't clear that nonsense out of your mind that it's the last name, okay, um, it can be a little bit uh, prohibited. <laughs> yeah. You just have to, you got to understand that. It's not, it's not a name, okay? It, it just means anointed. Yeah. That's part of that That's leaven, all. the leaven that, that people have to get, let him purge out of us. Yeah. I know my brother asked me a question about uh, about leaven and uh, something. I forget. I don't know where he was reading it, and uh, but he uh, he asked me a question about it, and I says, "Well, leaven basically uh, the sum and substance of it is false doctrine." Okay, and. I said it leads people astray, and all it takes is just a little bit to ruin the whole batch. And he was getting bits and pieces. He says, "Yeah, yeah, the leaven, the yeast works throughout the whole, the whole thing of dough." I, I says, "Yeah, exactly." I says, "A lie will ruin all the rest of the teachings that you have." Okay, because if you do one thing that's not true, it messes up everything else. I says, "It's kind of like when the devil, you got say you got a farm, you got 99, you got a hundred acre farm." Well, 99 acres of it, okay, belong to Yahuwah, but the devil has one acre that he's got his big toe on, and that ruins the whole farm because of that. Yeah, it's like or, one, one bad apple. Spoils. One bad apple ruins the whole, you know, bucket of cider. Yeah. So, you know, that's all it takes. And I, and I, I also reminded, or it, it reminded me of another scripture, and it had to do with the basket that was lifted up by two eagles, and carried over this wilderness area, and there was a lead cover put on this basket, and there was an effa of, of what was it, flour or yeah. dough, something like that. Wickedness, yeah. Wickedness, yeah. And it had to do with false teachings being spread around the world. Yeah. And I, I pointed that out to him, so I'm sure he went and dug into that too. So. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of these are parables. Yeah, yeah. They represent yeah. other things. Parables, or you know, metaphoric. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you but hear the true meaning, it's impossible to forget it. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But to think that, you know, he he asked me that. Um, mm -hmm. That meant to me that he actually um, was interested in what I know about that about, you know, about Scripture and, uh, yeah, nice. you know, what, what I could reveal to them. That's my one brother that actually reads Scripture. Wow. None of the rest of them do. Yeah. My, my, other, my sister, my other brother, and, you know, sister-in-law, they don't, they have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Because they're all Catholic and they're, you know, but I have a brother-in-law yeah. 
my sister's husband, who he listens to what I say. He may not necessarily comment, but he enjoys talking because he gets a perspective that he doesn't get anywhere else. And, you know, he says, I take everything with a grain of salt. Well, that's fine. You know, I says, you know, you listen to a lot of different things, a lot of people, and mull them over, check it out, you know, and uh, see what uh, see what's true. Yeah. Says, there's only one source you can go to to see what's true. That's right. The, 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 his discernment will show us. But, uh, you know, when you talked about salt, we are the salt. Exactly. And, and, the, and it, we're a unique flavor. And, yeah. if, you know, we can't lose that flavor. And if we lose, lose our saltiness, yeah. then what good are we? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, to have someone that, you know, I don't preach anything to anybody. Mm-hmm. I just live what I know is true. Except when you're and, on the Internet. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's a little different. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't do nothing like preaching, except. Remember yeah. that? That was good. Why don't you tell everybody that story of your friend? You don't have to mention any names, but you know what he said about uh, he's, he doesn't do anything Catholic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I could remember all of it, I know it was a pretty good conversation, but uh, yeah, we, we, we talked about uh, you know religion, if you will, and uh, how Catholicism basically... And they get all their doctrines from it. And uh, he says, oh, I, I don't do anything Catholic. And uh, I says, okay, well, I says, that's good. I says, uh, other than Sunday or, you know, uh, the, the Bunny Rabbit Festival, um, communion, yeah. you know, uh, you know, how about the Trinity belief? Okay. Um you know, the, uh, the the holidays, basically. Uh, other than those, you, you don't do anything Catholic. Yeah. And they, <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> he just didn't, didn't really know what to say. Yeah. It was, I, I, I it, it went a lot different than that, but I'm just trying to <laughs> recall. Yeah, and I think, I think you were walking along a car, and he was closing the back trunk, and that's where you went. Uh, yeah, I believe, yeah. That, I that that's, seems, uh, uh, yeah. It looks like he's seems, doing everything Catholic now. Yeah, yeah, and I was smiling about it the whole time I said it, you know, and he, he, he's watching me, you know, and it's like, man, you know, guys getting me every time here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they, <clears throat> you, you might not pray to the dead with rosaries like Hindus do and Buddhists. No, he didn't do that, no. Yeah, he didn't do that, but uh, pretty much everything else. Oh, wait, 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 wait one other thing. He doesn't pray to the dead people, of course. Um, <laughs> he does go to steeples. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. hearing a steeple somewhere nearby. Uh, I was outside yesterday, and I heard this big dong. You know, I went, wow, I know what that is. And, uh, you know, it was one of those places, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Calling to Vespers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Calling the, the people to prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that fellow is that... Uh, had that experience, um, we've become pretty good friends, and he uh, he really respects um, what I'm able to teach him, you know, yeah. but it's because it's not me, it's Yahusha yeah. uh, speaking to him through me. Yeah, we can't you know, do that, anything that without thing. him. And, uh, uh. and he knows that, yeah. and he always looks forward to our conversations, and it's, um, it's always something that he... He was like mulling over during the week or something. He needs to hear, and he just doesn't really realize it until we have our discussion. And it just always, it always that point, and and that's a good thing. He always learns something, and because uh, I ask a lot of questions, you know, well, what do you think about that, you know, or and he'll ask me questions, and I says, well, okay, but what about that, or what about this? You go, oh, I never thought about that. Well, that's just a little more encompassing there. It's all about perspective and, and, and whose perspective you have. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. I enjoy it. Yeah. 
Well, people call me, and there was a gentleman this morning that called me. It was really pleasant to hear him. Uh, he was saying, I can't find anybody who believes the truth. And uh, because, you know, he's, he's reading scripture with comprehension. He's been, you know, exposed to the true name, and he's guarding the commandments, and he loves what he's been doing. And he's uh, just uh, so lonely, you know. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but then when we get together with uh, somebody, maybe two or three other people, they've still got their their minds are still controlled to some extent by some of the Christianese or that slips out of them and they say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I just said the thing, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah. You know, but we're all yeah. works in progress. He's not going to ignore us. He never left us. He said, I'm not going to leave you orth orphans. The world's not going to see me, but you will see me. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. you know, but then that, that's because he's living in us. And right. That's not being yep. taught very widely. His yeah. name, his name is in us. That's what it is. You know. Well, that was, that, that's a very important thing, though. You know, the name. Without the name, you're not going to have understanding. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you, Dan. That was wonderful of you to read those uh, that article and the and the Shema, and uh, I'll I'll keep the uh, recording going just in case uh, we have something else going on. Well, thank everyone for watching, and remember to like and subscribe, and come see us in the next video.